Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois. And this year, our second season, we're going to be doing something a little different. We are partnering with the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas, to bring you these podcasts. My name is David Caves. I'm the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Library and former Dean in the School of Biblical Theological Studies at Wheaton College. Our purpose in these podcasts is pretty simple. We are here to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, so that we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, not just read it and study it, but also to live it. Joining me today is Dr. Danny Carol Rodas, the Scripture Press Ministries Professor of Biblical Studies and Pedagogy at Wheaton College. Dr. Carroll, good to see you. Well, good to, see, good to be with you again. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, now we are actually doing this in the days of COVID, so we're doing it remotely. So from time to yeah. time, our computers might ding and make little sounds, but that we can't help that. We get emails and those kind of things. I haven't figured out how to stop we'll do that our yet. Best. Hey, you, you've written on the so-called minor prophets that aren't so minor, I think. But uh, let's talk about the literary features today of the book of Amos and, and talk a little bit about how that contributes to the overall picture of God, the people of God, the, uh, the world at the time. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what we don't realize sometimes is that each of these 12 books, the Minor Prophets, actually has a very different literary style, which you would expect because they're different authors. And what we tend to forget as well is that these books are poetry for, for the mm. most part. And so we're not finding, you know, treatises about the future or, you know, some kind of formal comments about the world as they knew it. What we're seeing are messages, theological messages and pastoral messages and political mm -hmm. messages communicated in the, the way they knew how, which was poetry. And so if we learn how to read poetry better, you know, the ancient type, we'll actually begin to appreciate and understand their message more. And the point of our, our times together, because we're going to do one now and then there's a second mm -hmm. one, is to show how each of these books does it in a different way. So Amos has a particular way of doing it. Our second podcast on this two-part right, series yeah. will be with Hosea. Hosea. But uh, Amos has a very particular way of communicating things, and he does it by lists, actually. Hmm. Lists of fives and lists of seven. And Are those so, numbers um, significant, five and seven? You know, I don't think the number five necessarily, but the seven, um, as many of your hearers would know, is kind of a, the number of completion, the perfect right. number. And so when we find these lists of seven, that might be more significant, mm. but the patterns are consistent, the pattern of, of, of fives and mm. sevens. Yeah, and I can give you... Give me an example. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, for instance, if, if you're... If you're uh, readers, if they're not driving somewhere, <laughs> but if they have their Bibles, if they go, for instance, to chapter okay. 2, beginning in 14, verse 14, through the end of the chapter, verse 16, if you count them, you will see that there's seven different kinds of soldiers. Now, he's describing military defeat. And so by talking about seven different kinds of soldiers, he's talking about perfect defeat. Utter destruction. Utter destruction. Utter utter. And it's, it's also mocking because these soldiers are running away and they're running away naked. I mean, so mm. all the arrogance of, of the national fortresses and armies is, is being exposed mm. by the prophet. Mm. If you go to chapter 3, you have a, a sequence of, of, of interesting encounters, you see. Beginning in verse 3 of chapter 3, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? And then you have the, verses 3, 4, and 5. You have five different scenes. Mm. And then, in, and in the Hebrew, each of those questions begins in the very same way. And then you go to verse 6, and you have two more questions. And the form of the question in the Hebrew changes. Ah. And those begin the same way. So you have a five plus two effect. So then you have not only the five, right. but you also have seven. seven. Mm. And there's all kinds of other examples. Let me give you a couple of, of quick ones because I know we don't have that much yeah. time. Yeah. But in Amos, you have three doxologies, and one of them is in chapter 4, verse 13. And he lists 
different things about God in the form of, in the Hebrew, participles. You know, the one who, he who forms the mountains, he who creates the winds. Mm -hmm. And what you find in that doxology are five participles. Earlier in chapter four, you have five different times it is mentioned, yet you did not return to me. So what you have is, in chapter four, a list of these different things and the people's response five times that they did not return to him, meaning they're stubborn and refused to respond to his attempts to bring them back. And then it culminates in verse 13 with a doxology with five participles. And so you see this over and over and over again in chapter two, verses six to eight, when it lists the sins of Israel, hmm. which are social yeah, sins, yeah. there are actually seven that are listed. And if you go later on in the book, there's you know, uh, five visions. And I can give you more examples, but what you're seeing yeah. over and over and over again is that he's alerting you. And the way the way that, that Amos does this is by, by kind of running over you <laughs> with one example after another example after another example, just kind of flooding you with all of these different kinds of, of lists to convince the reader. Mm -hmm and those who hear, of the depths of the sin of Israel and its leaders. So it's, it's really about this repetition uh, of five and seven. Yeah. is really about what yeah. you just said, how, how, how grave the sins of the people are, and why the threat of utter destruction is upon their doorsteps. Yeah, and, and the power of the one who does this, is also described in fives and sevens. Mm. There's other doxologies where you would have seen the same thing. The second doxology has five plus two, and then the last one will have five. I mean, so again, what we're seeing, not only is it the, the list of threats and sins, it's also lists of the descriptions of the power of the God who has come to judge them. Gotcha. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Dr. Carroll, for being a part of this. Thanks as well to Silvio Vasquez, Rebecca Larson, and Krista Sanchez for helping us edit and produce these podcasts. If you want to study biblical languages, then the best place you can go is Wheaton College, hands down. Go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for modern and classical languages. Get started there today. If you have questions or comments about this podcast, we'd love to hear from you as well. Contact us at exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.